Welcome to the In My Opinion Show with Ronald Barry Robinson and friends seen on the internet 24 hours, 7 days a week. To view, go to Flint, Michigan, Comcast Cable, Channel 17 every Saturday at 6 and every Wednesday at 8.30. You can also view the In My Opinion Show on Detroit, Michigan, Comcast Cable, Channel 68, 7 days a week. You can also access the In My Opinion Show through capital letters, RBR, IMO, Facebook, and YouTube. I want to wel welcome our millions of viewers out there in television land. I also want to welcome my very talented co-host, Miss Denise Smith-Allen. Hi, Ron. Hi. Mr. Henry Hatter. Hi, Ron. Hi. <coughs> Let's talk about <coughs> Flint, Michigan in crisis. If it's not the water fiasco, it's the Flint school system. Over $21 million in debt, and according to published reports, Another allegedly $8 million plus the school system spent without proper authority. Two fraud charges were dismissed. Probably a plea bargain. <laughs> Somebody's ass need to be kicked. That's for sure. And the plea bargain was probably to keep a couple people from going to prison. In other related issues, the system has spent over $400,000 of tax-supported dollars for school suspension. What the hell is going on in the Flint school system? If it's not, if it's not bad enough, the school system is graduating a dismal 40% of its student body. Maybe that's why its graduation, its graduation rates are so poor. It's easier, to, it's easier to suspend students than it is to graduate them. Henry, what are your thoughts? Well, Ron, you're talking about two issues here. <clears throat> First of all, you're talking about the school issue and the city of Flint issues. Which one would you like to have me address first? Either one. You, you decide. Okay. <clears throat> oh, let's, let's address the city of Flint problem first. As you know, the city of Flint has a deficit of over $20 million that it has to retire uh, <clears throat> before it can even get the footing to bring in uh, new resources into the city, like new business development. Uh, new people. What it's I was a, alluding to the, is, the, is the Flint school system that's $21 million in debt. That is also in deficit. Okay, exactly. And, and it's uh, for the same reason. And the school system owes, uh, while well, you've nailed it down to 20 to $30 million as a deficit. It has to retire this deficit before it can reestablish itself uh, among education, educating institutions in the state of Michigan it is most likely to lose that status within the next year. And we're likely to see an emergency manager. <clears throat> but um, to, to, uh, to recover from a $20 million deficit is a very difficult thing to do. Uh, it, if, when you consider uh, $100,000, that would be the value of about two teachers. Now you do the math and figure out how many teachers would you have to retire out of the system to uh, recover the $20 million. And that's not likely to happen. Uh, they have uh, closed buildings. They have reduced uh, teachers. They have done as much as they could to provide some kind of immediate relief for the crisis that they face. But that's not enough. So what we need to do is <clears throat> to, uh, what this results in is rising classroom sizes. Uh, a good classroom for a, a productive uh, education experience should be about 22 to 28 kids. We are seeing in the neighborhood of 30 to 35 kids, and maybe more. Some, kids, some classrooms have 40 kids in it. That's an impossible situation to uh, improve uh, student performance. And student performance is the key uh, target that most uh, uh, school systems must pursue in order to continue to provide, be provided with dollars from the state of Michigan. Uh, and where we go from here, we don't know. Uh, they, and I, I think uh, unless there's uh, some kind of a referendum for the taxpayers in this city to, uh, to vote in new dollars to supplement 
of dollars that we're receiving from the state of Michigan, which is about $7,000 per child to run the school system. And yet many of our school buildings are antiquated and our kids don't want to be in classrooms. So that makes it difficult for teachers to provide the kind of uh, services that would increase the skills that kids need to move from one grade to another. And that creates a horrendous challenge. And if students are not part of the solution, then we'll probably see no progress at all. And how you make this happen, I, I don't know. But it takes a lot of discussion from a lot of people who really want to see the school system provide the kind of environment where our students become uh, <coughs> uh, new, provide new challenges for education, particularly in the Flint schools where the majority of kids are black. And we don't see the kind of enthusiasm for working out of this situation from the student population or from a parental uh, population. And so this, this uh, challenge remains with us, whether it is from uh, one day to another or from a year to another. If we're still around next year, we will still deal with the same problem with no solution in sight. Henry, let me, let me ask you this, or let me make this statement. I've been in around Flint for the last 25 years. When I was a, a reporter for the Flint Inquirer newspaper, all right, with uh, Mr. Ronald Parker, we did several uh, 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 articles on the Flint school system, all right? Uh, it, they, they, were, they had accounting practices, they were involved in fraud, poor teachers, Poor superintendents. I can't count the number of superintendents, all uh, right, that have that have that have uh, 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 been employed with the Flint school system, and and the, I, I don't understand. I really don't understand. You know, it, it it's supposed to be about the children, all right. But yet, the powers that be uh, uh, appoint these superintendents, all right. With hefty, with help, with, you know, with hefty, uh, uh, pay, with help, he, with hef, hefty salaries, guaranteed salaries, then they're around for two or three years, and they leave with these golden parachutes. Um, Denise, what is, what are your thoughts? Well, Ron, I'm, I'm thinking about what you're saying, and I'm not sure if I necessarily agree with the idea that. Um, you know, people are not really paying attention to the children. I think that you have a school board who are elected by the citizens with the understanding that they are going to be uh, involved with helping to um, manage a budget. They're also looking at personnel issues. They're also looking at the student population. And certainly under the under the understanding that we have right now that Flint population is dwindling and we're still trying to deal with the same um, format or structure, if you will, of how things were 25 years ago. And we just cannot do that. Um, we are in a deficit in a lot of areas, including our school system. We have people in place right now who are on the school board this, uh, that are making some very tough decisions about as Henry alluded to, closing buildings and personnel being laid off and that kind of thing. Class sizes certainly will have to take a hit on that because of what's left. Um, I still think it is incumbent upon uh, those parents or guardians or whoever are responsible for the children that are going to school to be actively engaged. That's a big part of this because those people who are getting um, funding that live outside of quote unquote urban areas and things like that, for one thing, you know, they have the resources, whereas we may not have them, but we have the human capital, which is very powerful. You have to make your voice known. You've got to be heard. You have to take the initiative to go to school board meetings. You have to talk to uh, representatives there to let them know that you are concerned about your child's education. And um, contact state 
um, school board, contact the governor's office and let it be known that uh, $7,000 um, per student may not be adequate. And if it's not, what can the state do to help implement change so that there will be enough resources so that we can have the kinds of things that children need? Outside of the classroom situation, there were years ago, we had um, after school activities for, for our young people. We had, um, I know we had homeschool counselors, but we also had um, persons who were dealing with, and, I, and I, the name is escaping me right now, but it was kind of like a community school director, if you will. And these were activities that allowed the children to have um, you know, a balance in terms of their education. So there's a whole lot of things that could be done if the resources were available. And right now, since they're not, then we have to make a, a stronger pitch. And that pitch has to come from those persons, number one, that have children in the system, okay, and they have not pulled those children out and put them in um, any type of a private school setting or, you know, one of those charter school situations. So if their children are there, then they have a responsibility, along with that child, to get an education. They need to have advocates, and the only advocate can be that person for where that child comes from. And, uh, well, why is it that the, the, the children are, seem to be always the ones that suffer? All right, you know, the sports uh, 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 is, is taken out of the school system. All right, uh, physical ed is taken out of the school system. Resources. Different, different other sports uh, uh, is taken out of the out of the school system. Why is it the children are always the ones? All right, that has to take the brunt of all of this. Why is it that they can't take, you know, these dollars? All right. From some, you know, from, you know, from somewhere else. I mean, I know these unions and stuff. You know, they play a big part in it too. But, okay, if we're so interested in the children, let's be interested in the children. All right. As I stated earlier, I've been around Flint for 25 years. Flint has always had, and has always been millions of dollars in debt. All right. Every time they get a new superintendent, a new spill is uh, uh, sold to the. So, uh, you know, to the gullible citizens, all right? And, I mean, the thing is, is that Flint has to be, be, has to be proactive, all right? It's just like the automobile industry, all right? They have their models f 10, 15 years ahead of time, all right? Why is it that the school systems can't, you know, uh, adopt some kind of a policy like that? Okay, what are we going to do in you know, in, in uh, what are we definitely going to do in, in uh, 2020? A strategic plan. All right, plan. exactly. A okay. master plan. And they haven't plan. had this. They come up with this master plan shit, but master plan for who? Well, again, Ron, I don't think you were listening to what I was saying. Sure I was. No, because if you're saying, that what, what about the children, the children taking the brunt of this, if, mm -hmm. you, have, you, if you don't have the resources... First and foremost, the children are going to school for one thing, education. Mm -hmm. They're supposed to be able to come out of school with skills mm -hmm. and, and, and abilities to read and write, uh, do math and science and things like that. So those are the foundation. That's the foundation for which they're going to, to school for their education. But as I said, you also have to have a balance. You also should create an environment where they can have you know, s other social activities. Mm -hmm. But a lot of those things, you talk about 25 years, but I'm, I can think longer than that because I've been in Flint a little bit longer, mm -hmm. whereas when Flint was a model for which people from around the country were coming because of the type of education system they had, whereas they had a magnet program. And the magnet program was significant in terms of educating kids and giving them some classical, ed, you know, information. They were also doing um, science and, and technology and other things like that that were that was available to them at that time that is not available now, you know. And again, it is because of the dollars and cents. And so, who makes those decisions? Those decisions aren't, aren't just made on a local level. They're a state level, national level. So, but but all politics we know is local. Mm -hmm. So the first step is again engaging parents or guardians, grandparents. You know, and a lot of times, you know, depending on those the home setting, 
you know, the parent is saying, well, look, I'm doing my job, so the school is supposed to do their, their job. Well, I say yes and no, because yes, you are doing your, but your job also is to advocate for your child. Your child mm -hmm. can't advocate for himself or herself. You have to have somebody out there doing something for them. Mm -hmm. So the school board meeting is a good place to start. And then typically what happens, unless there is a crisis of some sort, whereas a parent is um, seeing that maybe their child is being mistreated or been expelled or something like that, then they may engage that system. But overall, they don't make it a point to say, I'm going to that school board meeting. I'm, not, I'm going to that classroom. I'm going to go talk to that principal. I'm going to get myself involved. And the schools and the teachers, on the other hand, have to have a mindset to be open to that kind of dialogue and not put the parent off or make the parent feel, you know, um, intimidated by that process. But I say it's, it's a, it's a, it's a multifaceted approach that has to be taken with this thing because it's that serious. These kids are suffering, but some of what they're suffering is with the fact that economically, Flint has taken a hit on every front, including funding. Funding. If you don't have funding, you can't get books. If you don't have funding, you can't have enough teachers. If you don't have funding, I mean, the basic things that you need in order to educate your children are is in jeopardy. So what do you do? You fight. You get people engaged and involved. But this is a long-term approach. You can't just say, well, I'm going to show up today, and then you don't show up again for another year. Can't do it. Well, as I've stated before, you know, Flint has to become uh, 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 proactive, you know what I mean? And, you know, I mean, in my opinion, mm -hmm. I mean, I like Flint. I'm not trying to rag on Flint, you know what I mean? Because I was here for a number of years, all right? Uh, uh, and that I call Flint my adopted home, all right? And... Um, uh, so I want you people out there to know I'm not just necessarily ragging on Flint. All I want is what's best, in my opinion, and you know, and, and voiced by many others, what's best for the city and the children. Okay. Um, yes, Henry, you were going to say something. Well, I want to follow what Denise has said. <clears throat> um, Denise said that uh, we need to have more uh, engagement by parents and by uh, the public, and we need to hire a, perhaps a consultant so that you can reduce the politics among different people that don't work well together and have that person come up with a plan, like you said. What is a plan? What should we look like in five years? Mm -hmm. What should our kids be able to do? What, how, in 10 years, where should they be working? Mm -hmm. Stuff like that, we had no such plan. Now other communities like Clio, Goodrich and, and Grand Blank, you know, they have these plans, but we have nothing here in the city of Flint. We don't, if we do, we don't have the right body of people involved. Those people who have children in the system, in the system those who, people who care about kids. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and we, and by, by themselves, they should know by now that they cannot arrive at this plan. They hire, have to hire a consultant. Mm -hmm. That removes all of the politics off the table. And then you, you have input. And then you decide uh, through your conversation what should your kids be able to do in five years? What do you want to be able to, to see them engage in in 10 years? Mm -hmm. uh, <clears throat> and how should we go about this? Where, where should we look for the money? Mm -hmm. What can government do that it's not doing already? Mm -hmm. Because there are a lot of things out there that you don't know. For example, the only monies that can go into funding schools are monies from the state mm -hmm. and from the tax dollars. You cannot go out and borrow money from other sources or raise money and put them into the general fund of the school budget. That's a no-no. You can't do that. So <clears throat> there are a lot of things that we need to have to go into this equation to make it work and viable and applicable. Mm -hmm. And it has to meet targets that, are, um, that people want in the city. I'm very disappointed that we haven't had that. Mm -hmm. And uh, like you say, the Board of Education is initially responsible. Mm -hmm. Even if, if, if they don't know that, somebody should tell them that. That's a part of their job. Mm -hmm. You know, if you're going to run for office, you know, the thing about it is that you should, you should be versed 
already. You know what I mean? Uh, uh, you know, on your on your on your on your responsibilities as a you know as a school board member. Now most you people go mean? in only with their egos. Yeah, you exactly. Don't go in exactly. With a, Name recognition. With, they get voted in, yeah. and then they get there and they do absolutely nothing. Oh well, I'm on the school board, or well, or, or I'm on city council. Who the hell to do? Well, okay, but if 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 perhaps if some are running on their uh, their egos, one of the things that they find is that their egos are immediately deflated once they go in yeah. and reality sets in because it's work. It is absolute mm -hmm. hard work to be sitting in a school board meeting and looking at the agenda and knowing that there are not enough resources. They may be over. Uh, um, the top with uh, administrators and things like that, not enough classroom teachers and not enough resources for uh, activities that would expand these children's uh, ability to, to compete in, in, a, in a global uh, market, okay? So one of the things that I will say, and, I, and, and it and made me think about this, is that um, with the Flint's master plan, okay, and people have their feelings about it one way or the other, the school system was contacted and there was a um, an established partnership uh, put together whereas there will be monies available not you know uh, private entities or anything like that but to to help deal with um, the stem program okay which is something that is is needed for our young people they need to know about uh, technology they need to know these things in order to compete in a global, uh, uh, you know, economy, a global uh, market out here. So we have to have our children prepared. So there is something on the horizons. And so it's also incumbent upon us to see what's out there because, you know, we can sit here and we can make assumptions about what's not being done. But before we kind of just go off and say, well, you know, th th this is it. We need to know, and maybe we could do a little bit more homework about that, because I want to say that, no, we are not where we should be at all. Not There's no question about it. But I think that, you know, you just don't want to say Flint has done nothing, I think, and the school board hasn't done anything. I think those people are, are doing what they can with what they have, okay? And certainly... There may be some people, there's some new um, people who have just got elected. Now, they have to have um, what I call the learning curve. You know, they have to get in there and see what's up because you can hear about it, you can attend meetings all you want, but now that you're sitting at that table, you're sitting it on the other side now. And so you're going to get some information that may, be, may not be, uh, you know, uh, available from, to the public. You see what I'm saying? Let me ask you this question uh, for our viewing audience. Um, what is the purpose of the STEM program? Well, uh, Henry probably could speak better yeah, to that. Yeah, STEM is a, uh, that's a higher order of, um, of programming for high schools, mm -hmm. and kids have to be better prepared for that. You can't have the mediocre uh, education curriculum that we're following. Mm -hmm. this, this STEM program, which stands for uh, science, technology, uh, math, and um, <coughs> uh, engineering mm -hmm. <clears throat> so now just figure out only did that 900 uh, I understand that Bill Gates attributed uh, one billion dollars is it to the, uh, mm -hmm. the I'm not sure yeah mm -hmm. Ron sent it to us mm -hmm. now kids who uh, receive those kind of scholarships are going to do well in the STEM program mm -hmm. because they're going to meet all of this criteria they will have to be well versed in English in the core curriculum. Right. We don't have many kids in our core curriculum that do well, right. because they uh, they don't strive to do well. Not the kids are not um, talented enough to do well, but they just don't do it. Our kids feel privileged; they don't mm -hmm. have to do it. We need kids that ha want to do this. And Bill Gates did the right thing when he offered that billion dollars to mm -hmm. our kids for the most talented of us. They will be good at engineering. They, you have to have lots of math, you have to, lot to have chemistry, you have to have geology and biology, and you'll have to have um, various types of science, and you have to have all of the math uh, through high school, uh, through calculus, and uh, 
uh, science, you'll have to have the basic earth sciences and so on and so forth. And technology, you'll have to learn how to read uh, graphics um, and uh, uh, scales of all kinds so that you can function in that. Try to imagine how many kids can you name that you know personally that can do that, that's going to high school, in the community of Flint or in your own neighborhood. Just try to imagine. Right. We don't target our kids for that. We target our kids for uh, other classes that are easy to, you know, health and uh, basketball and stuff like that, and uh, just getting along in classrooms and doing the best you can. Here's a little bit of history here, a little bit of history there, and don't know who Martin Luther King is. Yeah, um, that's we, we got to improve this, and you can see what some of the problems mm -hmm. are, right? Right. And so we got to get our kids ready, and those core curriculums, core curriculum again, mm -hmm. is um, math, um, math, um, English, uh, science, social studies. Mm -hmm. Okay. Right. Those are those are your key core. We have to have our kids focus on those kind of uh, classes to uh, get prepared for STEM. Right. And there's somebody out there with the money if we can find the students that are prepared. Well, hopefully hopefully we'll be able to find them, okay. Um, Flint, Michigan in crisis. This has been a wonderful conversation. I've, uh, I've learned a lot, but I want to thank uh, our technical uh, staff, uh, my uh, learned uh, co-hosts. This is Ronald Bay Robinson and friends saying, then my opinion show. Stay focused.